हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर मानी श्रेष्ठ वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट हरियाणा स्कूल ऑफ बिजनेस जी जे यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी हिसार टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द टॉपिक मैनेजिंग परफॉर्मेंस बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द डिस्कशन लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट द कॉन्टेंट्स द डिस्कशन विल स्टार्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द टॉपिक फॉलोड बाय definition of managing performance objectives of managing performance and process of managing performance the discussion will end with a summary by the end of this module students will be able to understand the concept of managing performance identify various methods of managing performance and know about the objectives of managing performance The term managing performance is an extension of performance appraisal. Managing performance is a wider term whereas performance appraisal is an element of managing performance. Managing performance involves managing and dealing with the behavior of employees or outcome in job function during a specific period of time. Performance consists of three elements: goals, measures and assessment performance appraisal is an old concept which focuses on evaluating the work performance of employees without sufficient reference to the antecedents of employee performance it was believed that performance of employees can be improved by evaluating the performance of employees through a formal mechanism like performance appraisal competence motivation and commitment of employees due to globalization the competition increased and organizations were no more interested to carry over a mechanism which is not integrated with organizational goals and objectives therefore the concept of managing performance gained momentum and this concept was adopted by more and more organizations managing performance means the way in which the performance of an organization or organizational units is managed the features of managing performance are designing a framework of techniques which helps in achieving objectives of the organization for the given inputs providing information on the contribution of human resources to the strategic objectives of the organization recognizing and rewarding employees who performs better formulating and communicating employee performance plans evaluating of performance of each employee on the basis of performance plan during the appraisal period this has many components like developing objectives and mission statement of the organization enhancing communication fixation of responsibilities and accountability implementation of appropriate reward strategies and development of employees to improve performance and career progression thus managing performance is an organization wide system of integrating business metrics with efforts of employees this is because employees are strategic asset which occupies a center stage in competitive strategy of the organization linking of employees with the business processes financial parameters strategies and customers is essential for sustenance and success of organization in the long term let's try to understand few definitions of managing performance managing performance is an ongoing communication process undertaken in partnership between an employee and his or her immediate supervisor that involves establishing clear expectation and understanding managing performance is a process which contributes to the effective management of individuals and teams in order to achieve high levels of organizational performance the essentials of job functions the employee is expected to do how the employee's job contributes to the goals of the organization what doing the job well means in concrete terms how employee 
and supervisor will work together to sustain, improve or build on existing employee performance, how job performance will be measured and identifying barriers to performance and removing them. These are the certain characteristics of managing job performance. The main objectives of managing performance are to help in formulating of strategies in order to give shape to the organizational objectives and goals, to encourage employees in setting up goals which are consistent with organizational strategies, to manage the strategy implementation process by monitoring progress, to provide feedback to the employees about their performance against preset goals, to motivate support and reward employee behavior consistent with organizational goals and objectives. To promote a culture of learning and development in the organization. To ascertain employee and managerial talent required for the succession planning. And finally, to encourage participative management style whereby employees set their own performance goals so that achieving those goals becomes their mission. Management of performance consists of all aspects of organization like organizational strategies, environmental responsibilities, business processes and innovation with employees. This is competitive strategy of the organizations to continuously improve the competitiveness and performance of the organization by promoting employee commitment towards organizational goals and objectives, developing employees through work, encouraging employees to improve their competence and productivity. Managing performance aims to integrate efforts of employees with organizational development initiatives. The components used in the integration process of management of performance include performance planning, performance analysis, performance appraisal, performance link reward system, performance development, performance feedback and counseling. The planning for employee performance involves certain steps. These are performance objectives are set up on the basis of job description of the employee. Employees capabilities and motivation to deliver the performance objectives are assessed. Then the performance expectations of the manager, department and the organization from the employees are set up. After that periodic review and adjustments are done from time to time and all the resources which are required for achieving the organizational goals are provided. And lastly employees are motivated to work hard to achieve personal as well as organizational objectives. Performance planning is a very important component for the success of managing performance process. Performance planning draws up a performance contract which clearly tells that what is expected from the employees. Performance planning addresses what must be achieved. There are different approaches to performance planning in the organizational context. The four main approaches to performance planning are goal setting approach, job description approach, competency based approach and critical incident approach. According to the goal setting approach, people who have clear set of goals in their mind direct more effort toward their work as compared to people who do not have clear goals to be achieved. Employees choose their goals on the basis of their belief about what they can achieve, their past performance, their beliefs about consequences and their judgment of what is more suitable to the given situation. Success of employees depend upon knowing whether they are performing according to their goals and adoption of suitable task strategies. Value choice depends upon individual's conscious or subconscious philosophy. 
Goal setting involves certain steps like setting up a goal which the employee wants to achieve, selecting a course of action which leads to the attainment of the goals and carrying out the chosen course of action. Thus, performance of the organization can be improved by setting up goals at individual, department and organizational level. Job description describes the tasks, duties and responsibilities associated with a given job. It defines all activities that an individual is required to perform in order to complete his job successfully. Performance measures or metrics are generated on the basis of these tasks, duties and responsibilities. Competencies can be defined as the cognitive, effective, behavioral and motivational characteristics or disposition of an individual's which enables him to perform well in a specific situation. Competencies include personal characteristics of an employee which affects his behavior that is important to goals and objectives of the organization. Competencies mean the inputs which enables the employees to perform their job effectively. Competencies that have an impact on the performance of employees can be classified into five broader categories. These categories are network of professional contacts which includes personal contacts at work as well as non-personal contacts. Theoretical knowledge of intellectual and descriptive nature. Ability to complete the work within a specified period of time. Practical skills and knowledge related to the job. And the fifth category is reference, attitude and values of the employee. Critical incident approach. Under this approach, only critical incidents and the behavior associated with these incidents are taken into consideration for evaluating the performance of employees. Three steps are involved in this method. First step involves preparation of a test of noteworthy on the job behavior, whether good or bad. After this, each job behavior is assigned scale values depending on the degree of desirability for the job. And at the end, a checklist of incidents which defines good and poor employees is prepared. After that, every rater is given that checklist on the basis of which he assigns rating to the employees. The main motive of adopting this method of appraisal is to appraise the employee who handle critical situations very smartly because in normal situation almost every employee performs well. This method helps organizations to identify those employees who can handle critical situations smartly. For example, how the managers handles the workers during the period of strikes, lockouts, etc. can give an idea about the leadership qualities of the manager. One of the advantages of this method is that it measures behaviors which are important for performing the job effectively. Maintenance of proper records of critical incidents provides a basis for judging the fit between the employee and his job. However, some of the limitations of this method which have been identified are as follows. It may result in overly close supervision. Then negative incidents are generally more noticeable than positive ones. The recording of incidents is a core to the superior and may be put off and easily forgotten. There are various models of performance planning. To start with, investigative model. First of all, the tasks, roles and responsibilities associated with a given job are identified by the manager and then the competencies of the employee are ascertained in order to set performance objectives in such a way that it is relevant to organizational goals 
and objectives and can be achieved by the employees due to the competencies possessed by the employees. This ensures that the performance objective that the employee is required to attain are specific and meaningful. Observational method. Under this method, current skills and competencies of the employee are observed by the manager carefully. Performance objectives of employee are set up on the basis of employee's capabilities and skills observed by the manager. This helps in setting performance objectives that are in line with the individual proficiency of each employee. Consultative model. Immediate superior, functional heads and customer are consulted by the managers for formulating the performance plan. This consultative approach is very useful in meeting the requirements of the customer including internal as well as external effectively through consensus building. The concealed model. Performance plans for the employees are formulated on the basis of inputs received from peers, customers and other managers through informal means without the knowledge of the employee. Such performance plans are unilateral in nature and therefore kept secret by the manager. However, this type of performance planning is difficult to work. The next model is blind model. Managers feel that there is no need to have a formal performance plan in hand because the employees already know what are their job roles and responsibilities and they also know what is expected from them in their job. This model is used in most of the Indian organizations which ultimately results in misunderstanding between the manager and his employees about what performance means. Performance analysis involves the monitoring of performance of employees according to the agreed performance objectives periodically for motivating the employees to perform effectively according to the performance plan. Progress of the employees in achieving their performance objectives is analyzed by the managers. If the employees do not perform according to set objectives, then it is the duty of the manager to support and guide the employees to take corrective action. Performance analysis is not a formal assessment of performance of employees, but it helps in keeping the work efforts of employees focused. The steps involved in analyzing the performance of employees are revisiting the performance plan from time to time, analyzing the problems in achieving performance objectives according to time, cost and quality, reinforcing motivation of employees in achieving the performance objectives, assisting, training, motivating and counseling the employees who could not achieve their performance objectives. Performance appraisal is a tool used to formally evaluate the performance of the employees to reinforce performance achievements through rewards and compensation and identify employees with poor performance for developing their skills and competencies. Structure tools are used to measure performance with respect to agreed performance objectives and then scores or ranks are assigned to the employees according to their performance. Certain steps which are involved in performance appraisal are determination of objectives of appraisal. It is the first step involved in performance appraisal and it wants to achieve for the organization. There are two main objectives of performance appraisal, evaluation and development. Second step is selection of appraisal technique. It involves the selection of best techniques which will be used by the organization for appraisal. Next step is to decide who shall be the appraiser. Then training of managers and employees for using appraisal instrument is being carried out. 
then necessary forms are distributed to the managers and employees for recording their comments, observations and remarks. For managers, performance appraisal forms are given to the managers for distributing them to the employees for completion of self-appraisal. The employees fills up this form by writing down his achievement and then gives scores on his performance. The form is then returned to the managers for remarks and ratings of appraisal. After that, ratings are finalized by the senior managers. Then, finalized ratings are then communicated to the concerned employees and at the end, MIS is prepared and appraisal results of all the employees are documented. After conclusion of performance appraisal, rewards and recognition plans are drawn out for the employees according to the level of performance appraisal scores. Performance linked reward system consist of compensation revision, career progression, transfer, etc. of the employees. According to performance based compensation system, employees with higher performance are rewarded or compensated at higher levels and vice versa. If compensation is paid on the basis of performance appraisal, then it helps in motivating employees and employee ret retention. The appraisers seem to have greater acceptance of appraisal process and feel more satisfied with it when the process is directly linked to the rewards. These findings of the research proves that the performance linked compensation system are more successful in motivating the employees for better performances. The main goal of rewarding performance is to motivate the employees for better performance in future. However, money alone cannot be used to motivate all the employees with different backgrounds and working at different levels. Therefore, a combination of incentives at individual and group levels should be used to motivate employees. Such incentives could be performance pay, perquisites, competence pay, ESOPs, facilities, etc. depending on the needs and requirements of different employees. The process of managing performance does not end with administration of rewards. Continuous efforts are required to improve the performance of employees in the organization. Employees who perform better are given more responsibilities and employees with lower performance are given formal training and development so that they can improve their performance. Managers need to prepare an action plan for developing their employees in order to ensure that employees continuously work to improve their performance. The action plan should be reviewed periodically by the managers and corrective actions should be taken immediately. Performance Feedback and Counseling Managing performance is incomplete without feedback to the employees. Managers should try to improve the performance of employees continuously by providing counseling to them and giving opportunity to the employees to share their problems freely and frankly. Joint meetings with employees are very important for solving their problems. It is the responsibility of the managers to provide feedback and counseling to employees and therefore they are required to prepare a structured feedback session. The other tools used for taking feedback include 360 degree feedback system. This system provides a more holistic feedback to the employees because under this system feedback is collected from multiple sources like subordinates, colleagues, superiors. Performance feedback is an important and sensitive process and therefore a lot of care should be taken. The management of performance is very important part of the employee development process in every organization. It reflects capability of an organization 
to define goals and expectations from employees. A fair and ethical managing performance process is very important for the organizational competitiveness. Hence, it can be concluded that managing performance is an integral system of planning, analyzing, counseling, developing and rewarding performance of employees so that the organization can achieve its objectives effectively. To summarize the discussion, the term managing performance is an extension of performance appraisal. Managing performance is a wider term whereas performance appraisal is an element of managing performance. It involves managing and dealing with behavior of employees or outcomes in job function during a specific period of time. Performance consists of three elements, goals, measures and assessments. Performance planning is very important for the success of managing performance process. Performance planning draws up a performance contact which clearly tells what is expected from the employees. The managing performance is very important part of the employee development process in every organization. Happy learning!